Hello and welcome once again to another episode of Platinum Soul on Display. I'm your host, Tim Otonami, and tonight we'll be taking you on a very special journey to examine a collection of one of the greatest fighting game franchises of all time. We'll join our series creator and producer Harlem and editor and designer Max in just a moment, but let's take a look at the game. Welcome to a journey through time, a celebration of martial arts and pixel-perfect battles. Today, we delve into the realms of the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, a treasure trove of nostalgia that pays homage to the rich legacy of one of gaming's most iconic franchises. As you embark on this retrospective adventure, you'll find yourself transported back to the golden era of arcades, where players would gather around cabinets, engaging in fierce battles with their favorite world warriors. This collection masterfully captures the essence of those times, preserving the original gameplay and graphics that defined a generation. Boasting a total of 12 legendary titles, the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection brings together classics from the early days of Street Fighter, all the way up to the fan favorite Street Fighter 3. This comprehensive anthology invites you to relive the evolution of the series and witness firsthand the groundbreaking innovations that shaped the genre. Each game within the collection has been painstakingly restored to its original glory, ensuring that the pixel art and animations remain faithful to their arcade roots. Immerse yourself in the vibrant and diverse cast of characters from Rei Yu's iconic Hadoken to Chun-Li's lightning-fast kicks. The attention to detail is remarkable, capturing the essence of each fighter and their unique moveset. One of the most remarkable aspects of the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection is its commitment to authenticity. Not only does it provide an authentic arcade experience, but it also includes a wealth of supplementary content. Dive deep into the world of Street Fighter with a museum-like archive, featuring rare concept art, design documents, and fascinating developer interviews. It's an invaluable resource for enthusiasts and newcomers alike. Beyond the captivating gameplay and the abundance of historical material, this collection also offers a wealth of options to enhance your experience. And with the addition of online multiplayer, you can now test your skills against fellow fighters from around the world bringing the arcade spirit to the comfort of your own home. What truly sets the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection apart is its dedication to preserving gaming history. With a game roster spanning three decades, it's a testament to the enduring legacy of Street Fighter and the impact it has had on the gaming industry as a whole. By compiling these titles in one collection, Capcom has crafted a love letter to its fans and an opportunity for new generations to appreciate the brilliance of this franchise. So, whether you're a seasoned Street Fighter veteran or a newcomer eager to discover the origins of the series, the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection offers an unforgettable journey through time. It's a testament to the artistry, innovation, and timeless gameplay that have made Street Fighter a true legend in the realm of fighting games. It's an exciting franchise and an incredible collection of not only some of the best games in the genre, but a wealth of insight and information on its development. For more, let's join Harlem and Max for a discussion about the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection inside the newly constructed Mike Hager Stadium. So, um, you know, talk to me about it. Like, what's the, what's the system here? It doesn't have trophies at all or it just doesn't have a platinum? It doesn't have a platinum, but it does have 17 trophies. So, um, Sony is kind of odd with how games, some games have platinums and some have, have not. Um, another game that comes to mind is the Resident Evil 4 HD that came before the, remaster, the remake. And that game also didn't have a platinum trophy on PS3 and PS4. Weird, weird, weird things with the platinum system back then. I think they, they are slowly fixing it. But yeah, it doesn't have a platinum. Same thing for the other game that I have 100%ed, which is Third Strike Online Edition. It also doesn't have a platinum. But since they're Street Fighter games and they're dear to me, they're coming here, basically, so on, the, on, the, on I, the series, basically. I assume you get a trophy for finishing every game. So that's 12. What are the other five? There is some very, there is like a few odd ones. There is one that is very, two that are very hard 
and I still remember them, even I they are not looking at the, the list right now. But the devil is in the details. They basically want you to play Street Fighter 2 Turbo and find Ak uh, Akuma. But the thing is, this is the busted version of Street Fighter 2 Turbo that came in Brazil and the United States. It would always go to level 9 difficulty. This is a hard 100%. Like, this is a, this is none of this is easy. I would say, like, if you don't, you if you are not good at Street Fighter, like, really, you're not getting 100% of this because because of the trophy I'm blue, you need to get to blue belt level, which is basically gold level in Street Fighter 5. Okay. Lattice. So, um,. Yeah, I mean, then let's let's talk about the collection itself. It's really more of like a, um, you know, like we talked about this. It's like a collector's edition Blu-ray almost. If you're mm. if you're picking this up, it's really for the special features and just the history. All right, everything here is just like the the mainline Street Fighter games, you know. I think um, I I think uh, like for for playing like Street Fighter one, I think the look at this. You know, it, it's literally only here to, to make the collection. You know, because Street Fighter 1 was such a weird game, and it received such few ports. Like, I remember Street Fighter 1 being available in one Capcom collection on the PSP. And <clears throat> it was ass back then, and it's still ass, and it will be forever be ass. No, Street Fighter 1 is bad. It's a bad game. Actual garbage. But you know, Street Fighter 2 is such a revolution in like video game history and video game game design you know because there were no fighting games before street fighter 2 i still stand by by that thing there were no video games before street fighter 2 the world warrior because it created everything from lows to mids from the the commands from combos itself like it created the combo system itself because yeah. it was a bug and they find it cool and they kick it in. And then like, from each single one of these Street Fighter 2 editions, from Champion Edition, from Hyper Fighting, to the new Challengers, from Turbo, it, it, it adds so much stuff like it. it. It adds not just new characters like Cami, DJ, and others, but it adds like supers, it adds like different combo routes, and it adds everything. I didn't join the franchise at that time because I wasn't born when Street Fighter 2 <laughs> came out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wasn't even born when Alpha came out as well. I was born when Third Strike came out, which was 1999. That was the year I was born. And I only got to play Third Strike when it was 5. So it was 2005, it was 4. And that was the first time I actually played and enjoyed a Street Fighter game. But, you know, I, uh, since I was, a uh, pretty much at the arcades all the time, because father like to, to go there to get, grab a drink, and he would let me expectate other children playing Street Fighter 2, older children playing Street Fighter 3. And one day I remember he just came to me and gave me the, the coin for me and said, go play with the older kids. Let them teach you. I say, are you sure? And he said yes. And then I sit down at the third strike part for the future thing. And it was, uh, I think this day, the most, I guess the most, uh, one of the most impactful days, of most, well, I don't know, one of the best days of my life, I guess I could put it. it was the day that I finally connected with video games. You know? Yeah. And seeing these kids just play and parry each other's attacks and just do like a 50 or 60 percent combo was just like this is insane this is like the the the, the animes i watch this is like the sunday cartoon shit i watch but i'm controlling them this is the stuff it's kind of crazy to me how like this is what capcom does um not only do they make these sort of like like street fighter is not just a genre defining game it really is like a uh, medium defining game like when people think of uh you know video games a lot of people do think of street fighter um especially like in the mm -hmm. older crowd and street fighter 6 is very much a love letter to the series i think you would agree that they've done a really good job of you know bringing in uh older elements of the series and making them relevant mm -hmm. to this new game and then providing like avenues for people to 
understand the legacy I, of the franchise. But um, yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about just how this collection is kind of like a big step for video game preservation, um, it's not necessarily normal to do. You know, people do collections all the time like this, but this one seems really special in that they've done their best to, you know, make these arcade classics work, and they provided like a museum essentially for your, uh, you know, viewing on the series. Um, but yeah, like I said, I know Street, I know Third Strike is really important to you, and I know you kind of came in in the middle, so to speak. Video games are still not achieving what they were supposed to be, like. Like, the difference between movies and video games is that movies are a vision of someone, like, being... Every single second is, like, handy, or like, or like handcrafted, is, like, a valid vision that someone had, you know, down from the script, down from the look and everything else. And, like, video games are supposed to be, like, a pocket universe, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. something you explore, and it's always expanding. And that, that I think, Street Fighter excels at because if you play like world tour mode you'll find characters from street fighter one you'll find characters from uh, captain commando you'll find characters from strider you'll find like all of these other capcom fighting game ips that in the same universe so it adds a lot of depth to it you know so even new players that are just playing world tour they might find a character or some other character that they basically remember from another Capcom game and they're like, huh, he's here. Yeah. This old ass character that I thought they forgot and he's still here. He's older as well. You know, so there's this sense that this this universe, this artwork that Capcom created will go on if achieve the world. You know. Yeah. You may stop playing Street Fighter, but Street Fighter will go on forever. You know, and, and this, this to me is what makes it special. It's the fact that they refuse to, to just, to just stand still in time. There's a lot of franchises that just become the same, always. It's like the same thing over and over again. You know, and they keep rebooting and doing all this crazy sh all the time. Street Fighter just moves forward. Characters get old, characters die, and of course, I... Told the I talked about Third Strike before. Third Strike is just like so so good, man. Like from the from the artwork, from the music, everything about the game is just amazing. And like you have like other editions of Third Strike, for example, that I also 100%ed, but I also do not have a platinum trophy for whatever reason. Like the online edition, which like they basically remastered every single sound effect and every single frame of the game and they put it on the ps3 and the xbox 360 and it's just like amazing like it's amazing like the respect and the work they put it into that version as well i think uh, one last memory there will nothing be better in video games than the initial shock of being a five or four year old going up to the last opponent in arcade mode destroying his life bar and just being in utter shock that he rises up shouts resurrection and has a full health bar and the round is not over nothing in video game history will be as shocking and terrifying as it was to me i will uh, i will say um it is that you know this game is out on nintendo switch playstation 4 windows xbox one on steam it's only like 10 bucks right now it's on sale um so that might be a little incentive you know at the time of recording it's on sale so that might be some incentive to pick it up i would say that street fighter 6 is currently the best fighting game ever made <laughs> because it has most it's gonna have most of these games in it <laughs> part of the reason yeah you can put you can basically we'll be able to play the old games on street fighter 6 so Consider that as well. I, I just say Street Fighter 6 is a surreal experience. It, 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 it's a game that doesn't feel like it should exist currently on the gaming, uh, of how the gaming industry is going. If you're interested in playing Street Fighter with Harlem and other members of the HECA Collective, consider joining the HECA Club for Street Fighter 6. Just go to hecaclub.ju.mp and join the Gilded server. You can post replays, discuss strategies, find a sparring partner, or just hang out and spectate.
All skill levels are welcome. Max in Harlem, thank you so much for coming on the show. That's it for this episode of Platinum Soul on Display. If you'd like to keep up with Harlem and Max, the best place to find them is on Twitter. You can find me over on TikTok at Good Maybe Great. As always, you can find all of the projects from the HECA Collective at heca.uwu.ai. Take care and we'll see you around the net.